Welcome to our Today All Day special, The Upside. I'm Craig Melvin. The Upside is all about uplifting people and stories that show the true grit of the human spirit. And after spending an amazing two weeks at the Tokyo Olympics, we couldn't help but think about the power of sports. So today we're going to shine a light on how sports changes lives, helping folks overcome obstacles both on and off the field. Now, traditionally, the sport of rowing isn't known for its diversity. While talent is everywhere, access is not. But that didn't stop the students of St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey. With the help of a dedicated coach, they changed all that. And as you'll see, the school has a bit of a habit of turning tradition on its head. Spending a day at St. Benedict's Prep in Newark, New Jersey will leave you nothing short of inspired. You're a winner. You're a winner. Go! 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 Yes. The moment. The moment. Heart and hustle are everywhere. Thanks on three. One, two, three. Thanks. On campus and four and a half miles off. Yes, you know, that's what I want. On the Passaic River. You know, you're making a change if it feels uncomfortable. That's where you'll find Coach Craig White. I graduated from St. Benedict's. I live in Newark. I've lived in Newark my whole life. Ugh. What makes St. Benedict's Prep different is everything. And he's not kidding. The students take charge here. So when one asked him to start a crew team, he had no choice but to take it up with the headmaster, Father Leahy. And I told him, I said, no, the crew's too expensive, Craig. We can't do crew. One day I was walking around the property, walked through a door and tripped over an erg. So I called Craig. I said, Craig, what the heck is the erg doing here? Oh, somebody just gave it to me. You make up some story, right? Ergs kept multiplying. And then one day I look across my room in the monastery, just thinking, eight-man shell. Craig, he just ignored me. So now we have a, you're here doing a story on the crew team. What started as a leap of faith is now a 10-year success story. We're consistently getting higher and higher and higher and higher up the rankings. Our kids this year, they advanced to the semifinals at Stokesbury Cup for the first time in, in a decade. I, I never really imagined that I could be a part of something so big. When I got to the team, I was just like surprised that, wow, this actually exists. And like, that was really one of the first things that I... I could dedicate myself to. That dedication got Yamil, Jaden, and Alvaro a ticket to U.S. Rowing's Olympic Development Program. And now, they're dreaming bigger than they could have ever imagined. My dream one day is to make the Olympics. I would love to go to the Olympics. My dream is to make the Olympics. If one of my kids is on the Olympics, I'm probably going to break the television. You know, screaming and throwing stuff, but it's, it's great. Do we have a future Olympian in this group? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. While gold medals would be nice, Coach White says it's the character building on and off the water where the real magic happens. Every time I have to do something hard, I like think about it. Like, I've been on the erg for like 90 minutes straight before. I just think about that and be like, okay, I can do this. If I can do that, if I can do 90 minutes in the erg, I can definitely do this. What we do on the water every day, without question, changes lives. When the kids come to us and they're a part of the team, they change for a couple of reasons. One, first off, they learn and they understand that I have power to make my life better. It's not just about the sport, you know? It's about, am I making myself better? Uh, not just interpersonally, but am I becoming a better athlete, holistically better? Is my technique improving? Are my grades improving? Is my relationship with my family improving? And every generation of kids, every year, they raise the bar, and they do that themselves. But they'll tell you, none of this would be possible without Coach White. He's like the guy. He's just the guy. He's just the guy. He does. A, he does a lot for us. He sacrifices a lot. For us. He's like a he's kind of like a second father to me. These kids. These kids are so grateful for everything. They're grateful for each other. They're grateful for the experience, and you can literally ask them to move, move mountains, and they'll do it. From changing lives to changing the world of rowing to recognize the value of diversity in the sport. Coach says he's just getting started. The rowing community in our country in particular struggles. Um, it's struggled to be able to diversify the sport. You know, our kids get hooked the minute that they get in the boat. So all we have to do is to provide access, you know, open a door. And then once the kids walk through it, they want to do it every day. I want these kids to have whatever they want. I want them to be able to grow into the world they have the grit, they have the intelligence, 
they have the work ethic. So to be able to share myself and my family and my time with these kids, to be able to watch them grow, to be able to do what was done for me to another generation of, 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 of young people, What else is there? No. Skateboarding made its Olympic debut this year, but it's a 46-year-old newcomer and mom of two who has everyone talking, known by her alter ego, Auntie Skates, or B. Roy's uplifting and inspiring skating videos have gone viral on TikTok, proving she's not your average auntie. When I get on a skateboard, it is the most liberating feeling I've ever experienced. And whatever problems that I'm having in my life, they just go away. Yay! <laughs> and when I get in a, in a sari and I start flying in the bowl, it's just really fun. I feel very lucky that I found skateboarding. I could have lived my whole life and never found it. Meet Orby Roy, also known as Auntie Skates on social media. She's a 46-year-old mother of two who started to skateboard just three years ago. When I started skateboarding as a family, I started an Instagram account just to track our progress for fun and feel good about us as a family skateboarding together, and it made me really happy. Then in January of 2021, it was a particularly dark period for, I think, a lot of people with COVID, and everybody just seemed depressed. People weren't even hiding it anymore, and myself included. I think that, that mental health, everybody's mental health was suffering. So I created Auntie Skates as a way to spread joy and positivity. I started a TikTok account. I had never even been on TikTok before, and I took a character, Auntie, and I just started posting really fun, uplifting videos. I had created the character Auntie some time ago in improv, and I may or may not have been disciplining my children with that accent. Hello, everybody. It's Auntie. I'm out in the cold weather in Canada to do a rock to fakey. First try. Ready? That was one piece of it. And the other piece of it was I, I was getting on Instagram more, and I started following young South Asian women and I started to notice that they were complaining often about auntie. And every culture has that toxic person in their lives, the person that tries to bring them down, the, the person that's always judging them, you know, the person that says, why aren't you married yet? And every culture has that, my culture included. So why not be the person that builds people up? And that's why Auntie Skates was created, specifically. And it wasn't just her age that made her stand out in the skate park. As a South Asian woman, I do wear traditional dress often for special occasions, weddings. Any chance I can to wear a sari, I will wear it. A sari is a traditional Indian outfit that women wear, and it's a long piece of cloth that you wrap around yourself. It comes in really bright, vibrant colors. I like to have fun as a skateboarder. I like to have fun as a mom. And I took Auntie Skates a little bit further, and I put Auntie in a sari, and I skated the bowl. Orby didn't realize the impact that she would have on others. It was the comments that people were leaving from the 40-year-old man who used to skate as a kid and bought a board because of me, to the young Indian girl in, in, in a village in India who said, if you can do it, I can do it. It resonated with so many people in so many different ways. Roy was always someone that took risks, even when she was a young girl. My parents are immigrants. They came to this country in the 60s. And I think when they came to this country, they had culture shock. They didn't really feel comfortable raising a daughter in a new, more liberal country. And I think what happened was they kind of doubled down on their old school values. They were doing what they thought was best for me. And they were setting some standards based on their own fears. and. The great thing about my parents is that they learned from their mistakes. Yes, I got a computer science degree. Yes, I worked on Wall Street. But that day that I called my father and told him I was walking away from this job and he supported me and my mom supported me, I knew that I would always have my parents' support no matter what crazy thing I did. And with Auntie Skates, the fact that 
I was doing skateboarding in the first place, they were behind me immediately. Sadly, Roy lost her beloved father, Shamit, this year. I've always leapt before I looked, and the reason why I've been able to do that is because of my father's support. He always had my back, and he would gently guide me. Family support has always guided Roy, and it was her husband, and ultimately becoming a mother, that made her want to pick up a skateboard and try. When I first started talking to Sanjeev, skateboarding came up right away. He told me he sprained his ankle skateboarding and he couldn't come and meet me and that I should come and meet him. And I immediately asked him, are you a pro skater? I had no concept of adult skateboarding. And he said, I'm not a pro skater, I'm an adult skateboarder, I just like to skateboard. She just fell in love with it. Next thing you know, I get a text message of her dropping in on a quarter pipe <laughs> and, um, I, and, and like falling on her butt and laughing. And yeah, I think that was it, that hooked you. When we're sessioning, which is a bunch of us skating together, we just feed off of each other's energy and we push each other to try new tricks. We celebrate together and we also, we also push each other a little bit. Why not? Roy believes skateboarding has actually made her a better parent. There's a lot of life lessons to be learned in skateboarding. I've watched my kids' confidence grow so much as they skateboard. And they also learn a little bit about perseverance. You're not going to get something right away. It's not gonna be handed to you. Sometimes I'm mad, sometimes I'm frustrated. Mama, you say I'm the drama queen. I am the drama queen. They see all the emotions that I go through and they see me get through it. And that's what they're, they're mimicking that behavior now. Sometimes people are at the skate park and they're a little bit nervous. And I always go to those people and say, you know, say, how are you doing? Do you need some help? And now they do the same thing too. And I just, I, it, just the fact that they have compassion and empathy and that they've learned that, it, it makes me so proud. It makes me so proud. That's parenting 101, I guess. People ask her, are your kids embarrassed of you starting this thing? And we're, and we're, we're not, we're not. We're, like, we're really proud of her. Like, there's no reason to be embarrassed. Like, if you have like, a super cool parent or a super cool mom, be proud of it. <laughs> As a 46-year-old woman who gets into a bowl and skates in a sari, I want people to know that you can do anything you want. Be kind to yourself and follow those dreams. Do that thing you thought was too late to do. Do the thing that makes you happy. Auntie believes in you. Turning obstacles into opportunities might seem daunting for some, but not for weightlifter Chris Rudin, who has dedicated his life to teaching others how to live without limitations. A lot of people know that I'm, I was born with a disability. But a lot of people don't know the story behind the glove and why I've kept it on for so long. I started wearing this glove in middle school. I was used to the looks, but it wasn't until I went to middle school that kids started making fun of me. So this is the first time I am taking my glove off in front of people. I've hidden from everyone else and myself. And I can't anymore, I really can't. I remember making that video, uploaded it to YouTube, I closed my laptop, and I just didn't look at it. I was like, I don't care what happens, I'm just, I'm just gonna avoid it. And I woke up to being on the front page of YouTube, on the front page of Reddit, and all over the internet, Washington Post picked it up, and just everyone ran with it. This is me. It's a part of me something I have to learn to fully accept, and I guess you do too. My name is Chris Rudin, and I was born with two fingers on my left hand and a shorter left arm. I never even thought that there was other people like me. I accepted that I was different, and for a long time I accepted that I was broken. I accepted that I was less than. I always told myself that I never needed to stop hiding to the point where I wouldn't leave my house if I couldn't find my glove. I've had to even text my dad, I'm like, hey, I need a glove, and he would go to the store to get me one because I wouldn't leave the house. I refuse. But I set a goal, if I ever got a prosthetic arm, which is almost impossible to get, 
that I would take my glove off and I would show the world. Since my last post, I have been invited to be on a TV show hosted by The Rock. I never thought I would take my glove off and show people my disability. I'm here for every kid that's afraid of being different. Every kid that's afraid of the way they look or the way they are. I'm here to show that it's possible. And I hope every kid in America knows limitations are self-imposed. Great job. Thank you. To look back and go from the kid who is hiding the kid who was ashamed to be in front of everyone to being on magazine covers, being on billboards with The Rock, a guy who used to play with his action figures and speaking all around the world, making a book, breaking a world record and deadlifting over 650 pounds with one hand against non-disabled people. All of that is amazing, but every day I get to help someone have that light bulb moment of, hey, I'm more than my circumstance is the best feeling in the world. Super early this morning, but it's time to head to Nubability. Nubability is a nonprofit organization that teaches kids with limb differences how to play organized sports. I'm really excited to meet the kids, to see how the camp is. I never really had any of this growing up, so it'll be fun. How you doing? This is my first year as a coach at Nubability. When you think of the word overcomer, it's every single person in this room. What I really love about Nubability is there's archery, fishing, basketball, football, every sport you could imagine, even lifting weights. But more than just the sports, it's the opportunity to overcome any obstacle that this limb difference or amputation might present. Snag it. Oh, that's right, that's right, man. Good hustle. Go, 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 go. Oh my God, I'm so glad I got to see you. Are you fishing? Yes. Bonding with the next generation makes me feel impactful. It makes me feel like I'm serving some sort of higher purpose beyond the struggle that I have, but the struggles that everyone else faces. You can reel up the line a little bit. Come on, you gotta know we're gonna catch fish. Mr. Chris is awesome, kind, sweet, nice to others. Mr. Chris is one of my most favorite people in the world. Reel it in. And the most funnest one I've ever met. Boom! Boom! That's a catfish. Good job. One more time. All the way down. Chest up, knees out. Up! Good job. Good job. I'm stretching. I'm gonna... I was teaching kids strength and conditioning, but what I was really teaching them is unwavering confidence. Up. Let's go. The ability to be resilient and the ability to adapt for any circumstance. The most fulfilling moment today was definitely watching this guy who was definitely taken aback by like everything. He deadlifted for the first time in his life and he was emotional. He was definitely emotional. And it, it got me to watch a kid go from being timid to confident. You just did four different workouts in two seconds. That was cool. I love that light bulb moment that took me 17 years to happen. It takes them a few minutes. Look at you doing pull ups. It's important not to hide who you are because in hiding, you'll never discover who you actually are. All you will be is a carbon copy of everyone else, and the world has enough other people, and the world doesn't have any of you. Good job. So why rob the world and the next generation of the potential and the reach and the impact that you can be? By being yourself. Being seen makes me feel like a person who's not broken. And the biggest moment of feeling seen was when I looked at my mirror and I wasn't ashamed of what I saw anymore. The upside to my story is regardless of what life throws at you, there's always a way to make it to the top. Today on The Upside, we're shining a light on the way sports uplift and inspire. Up next, we're going to introduce you to a young boxer who's doing just that, fighting to claim a place for women in a sport still dominated by men. I didn't think when I had started boxing that I was going to come this far. I didn't know I was going to grow this fast. This is Violet, the warrior princess Lopez. I would probably say I'm more of a warrior than a princess. A 13-year-old boxer from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who's shaking up the world of youth boxing. People say boxing is not meant for girls. I want them to see me as someone who shows you that you can do the sport you love 
even though it's a sport that people say is not meant for you. Violet was born with the heart of a fighter. She's our youngest female boxer ever to compete out of the United Community Center. And I taught her from scratch, you know, from a kid that didn't know nothing. One day I was at home and my dad came home from work and he was like, your cousins are gonna do boxing, do you wanna try it to see if you like it? They looked around, they trained a little bit, and then as the weeks went on, she just got more and more into it. At just eight years old, Violet won her first fight. She was forced to wait two years for her next fight because there wasn't another female competitor in her age group. Early on in her career, she was always down on herself because she never knew when she was gonna get a fight. Being a female in boxing and then being an eight-year-old female, there's not many eight-year-old females that want to get punched in the face. For two years, she just trained. They would have show fights here and all the boys are fighting, but she wasn't. She was just watching from the stands. She started to kind of think if it was for her because she didn't feel like there was enough room for females in boxing just because there was no opportunities for them. I think that she realizes now that it's just part of the sport for female boxers. That's the last round, okay? 20 seconds. Not being able to get a fight and her crying because she wanted to fight. That's just as bad as losing. But Violet didn't let that stop her. By 12 years old, she was the top-ranked amateur boxer in the country in her division, winning gold at the Junior Olympics and five national championships. I want everyone to know that I worked really hard to get to where I am right now, and it's not always easy. One of Violet's biggest challenges is outside the ring, fighting the stereotypes that are familiar to many female athletes. Their biggest challenge is the fact that they are a female and not a male. People just assuming that they have it easier, people thinking that the training may be different for them, not as hard, they don't have to do as much. To see her cry in her bedroom, to say that my daughter wouldn't have national championships if she were a boy because it'd be so much harder and like that's real boxing is just crap. <laughs> Nonetheless, Violet persisted. Leading up to Lake Charles, we, I thought we had a really good camp. You know, she knew she had to step it up and she had to fight harder, prepare harder. Violet persevered. She, she outboxed them. She did what she had to do. I'm really happy. I'm glad that I got another win in my book. Violet was poised to have her best season ever in 2020. 2020 was going to be the year like that I just skyrocketed, but no, the coronavirus came along. It impacted me so much. I had to take off a year of showing people what I can do and who I want to be and what I want to change for boxing. Violet's gym closed in March of 2020 and she had three of her upcoming tournaments canceled because of the pandemic. Her next national tournament was set for March 2021. I'm looking forward to fighting because I haven't fought in all. It's going to be a whole year once that time comes. Not having fought in a while, it is going to be a little more difficult because I'm going to have to like get back into the groove of things. I just always tell her to continue to be her and work as hard as she can, and that'll, that'll just be enough to always know what you want, continue to be who you are, and just do the best that you can. We can't always expect you to win and be perfect. Violet finished third in the Youth National Championships. After that one loss, Violet's national ranking dropped from first to third. I think I needed that loss. That was my first loss in a long time. I gotta work harder because I want to get back to the number one spot because that's where I should be. I'm graduating eighth grade, so I'm going to become a high schooler in a few months. My birthday is coming up too, so I'll be 14. I'm beyond proud. I'm beyond proud. I, there, I, there's not a word. For what we've accomplished and for what we've done together, I, I just don't feel like people can take that away from me. In July, Violet's home gym reopened and she earned a bronze medal at the 2021 Junior Olympics in Lubbock, Texas. Next up, she's aiming for that number one ranking. My goal is to get my number one spot back because that's what I want, period. <laughs> that's it for us on the upside, power of sports. Hope you walk away inspired by the incredible people and stories that we showcased today, proving that you don't have to be an elite athlete to experience the life-changing power 
of sports. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.